Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of In Pursuit of a Parlay. I'm Chris Horwardell, your host, and uh, thank you for making last week's episode one of the biggest episodes we've ever had in this series. I think we're just over 22,000 views on YouTube right now. That's awesome. The podcast numbers are sensational as well. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for checking it out. If this is your first time, please like, subscribe, do all of that fun stuff so you don't miss an episode. NFL Week 2. What a crazy week. What an absolutely crazy week we had in Week 1. I have got, as always, BovadaSportsbook.com open in front of me. And we are going to take a look at my eight favorite games for week two, you know, it's interesting because we don't know who teams are just yet. Week one was, as I alluded to, bizarre at best, unpredictable, crazy, insane, everything we love about football, starting with that Thursday night game where the Bills just handled the Rams. And what a fun game we had last night as well, or a couple nights ago as well, between the Chiefs and the Chargers good times it's it's good to have football back i hope you're all enjoying it so far let's start off game one right here this this panthers giants game terrifies me i don't know who either team is yet i don't know if the if if saquon's back this giants team is very interesting the panthers had a weirdish game last week against the browns we're gonna wait and see on them i want to go to this indianapolis colts jacksonville jaguars game we are showing the Jaguars are going to win this one about 45% of the time outright. But I'll tell you what, something uh, something is rotten in, in Indy. This team, I have questions. I have real questions about them. The Colts are going to be without Alec Pierce, Shaq Leonard this week. Michael Pittman, Kenny Moore, and DeForest Buckman, uh, Buckner are, are questionable right now. If Pittman's out, I mean, that completely changes the offense. And I talked about this on a couple of shows this week. I think last week's Coles game was the first time I can remember having a quarterback who threw the ball 50 or more times and a, a running back who ran the ball 30 or more times with, uh, with Matt Ryan and Jonathan Taylor, respectively. Obviously, those guys are in the lineup. But without Pierce, without potentially Pittman and Moore and Buckner on the defensive side, you know, things are going to get interesting, I think. Um the Colts also did make the move to release Rodrigo Blankenship, their kicker, this past week. And they're actually, this is a shocking stat, but they're looking for their first win in Jacksonville since 2014. You know, we're going to talk a lot about bounce back games this week. And you would think the Colts would be a prime example of that after tying with the Texans, a, a better than we think Texans team, but still the Texans week one. I think their their bounce back week might be a couple of weeks away still. For Jacksonville, you know, it was a, it was a get your feet wet kind of game. Trevor Lawrence, two hundred and seventy five yards passing. James Robinson, the leading rusher, at sixty six yards. You have to think they're going to work Travis Etienne into that offense more in terms of you know rushing the ball. Over the coming weeks, Christian Kirk, we all made fun of the signing. Six catches for 117 yards. Was on 12 targets, but he produced. This Jacksonville team, I think they're better than we think they are. The numbers show that Indy's going to cover this one about 55% of the time. That line, uh, that line as you're seeing right here, is Jaguars plus three. At Bavada, I'll tell you, I think I think this is stealing. Starting off, this is an opportunity to go Jaguars money line, win outright against the Colts as our first pick. I love this one. Maybe I like the Jaguars more than maybe I believe in the Jaguars. Maybe I believe in Trevor Lawrence more than uh, other people do. But why not kick it off with an outright win from an underdog? Our second game, the New England Patriots heading to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bavada has the Steelers plus two and a half here. This is really interesting because this is another team, even missing TJ Watt for, you know, they're saying six weeks now with, with the pec injury. That defense is still really good. Mika Fitzpatrick was unbelievable 
week one. And the Patriots just looked like a team that didn't really know who they were. We're actually showing Pittsburgh's going to win this one outright about 52% of the time. This, again, potentially an opportunity to steal money here. Mac Jones, adequate week one. Game management stuff, 213 yards and a touchdown. Damian Harris, the leading rusher, 48 yards. And Jacoby Myers, the leading receiver. I think this receiver situation is going to be a problem here. I wonder if they've already put in a call for that Beckham fellow uh, to see if he'd be interested in catching passes from Mac Jones. 193 passing yards, not going to cut it. Uh, tw- good for 23rd in the NFL right now through week one. And they're, they're seven points tied for 30th in the NFL. On the other hand, uh, the Steelers played uh, played all right. They played all right. Trubisky looked like an adequate game manager. 194 yards and a touchdown. Similar numbers to Mac Jones. The running game was an issue because Najee Harris got banged up early, but he's back. He's going to be good to go. And uh, you would think that's going to be that's going to be solved with the, the presence of Harris in the lineup. Fryermuth, the leading receiver last week for Pittsburgh, 75 yards. Again, not a team that did a ton offensively, only 192 passing yards and 75 rushing yards, good for 24th and 26th respectively. But they did score points, 23 points last week. And their defense can get a stop. Mink is unbelievable. We're showing a 70% chance that Pittsburgh is going to cover this one. Forget that. Let's go Pittsburgh outright, plus 120 as our second pick. And uh, our parlay, two picks in at Bavada, is going to jump up all the way, as you see there, to a plus 450. You know, this is... From what I've seen, I, I'm the expectation here for me is this is going to be a week of underdogs and uh, and money lines. I mean, not a lot of not a lot of against the spread this week, but we'll, you know we'll see how it goes. Things things change midstream more often than I'd like to admit. The Cleveland Browns host the uh, the New York Jets this week. Bavada's got the the Browns giving uh, six and a half at home. This is another one. So Joe Flacco is going to get the start for the Jets again. We're showing the Browns are going to win this one about 76% of the time. Flacco is going to get the start despite... Man, it's sad that that Jets fans are calling for Mike White, who was utterly mediocre in his opportunities in the past. And Flacco threw 59 passes for 300 yards. Crazy. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Michael Carter. He had uh, he did have 60 rushing yards. They used him in the passing game a little bit. Corey Davis led the team with 77 yards passing, uh, receiving. This this offense is just you know it's going to be inconsistent. They were sixth in the NFL in passing yards last week, but that's because Flacco threw the ball 59 times. Honestly, should have thrown for more than the 307 yards that you did. So when we look at Cleveland, uh, we saw an offense that didn't really click. We saw Jacoby Brissett complete about 53% of his passes. The, the passing game was not putting pressure on the opposing defense, though the running game, absolutely outstanding. Nick Chubb, as you'd imagine, leading the way, 22 carries for 141 yards. 141 yards for Chubb, 147 yards passing for Brissett. That is not going to get it done long term. He's going to have to figure things out. DPJ led the way with uh, 60 yards receiving for the Browns, who were 31st in the NFL in in passing yards. And I'd like to remind everyone that that San Francisco-Chicago game did happen. However, second in the NFL in rushing yards at 217 a game. So we're showing the Browns are going to cover this one about 85% of the time. (sighs) I This is... This is one of the ones where I, I, I the money line just feels safer because I worry about the Browns' ability to score the football through the air. They they should be able to run the ball, but you would have to think the Jets' number one priority is going to be to stack the box and take away opportunities from Chubb, from Kareem Hunt, and the rest. This under is probably also a safe bet. 
but we're going to play it safe. Browns money line minus 280 at Bavada. And that, as you see, is going to take our parlay, parlay second time up to a plus 646 after three games. Not bad. Not bad at all. The next game here, we're going to look at the Washington Commanders. I have no idea what's going to This Bucks Saints game terrifies me because half of the Bucks offense is hurt and the Saints are the Saints. My instinct says Saints cover the two and a half, but I don't feel good enough about it to go with it. The Commanders head to Detroit. And Bavada's giving the Lions one and a half, uh, is uh, giving the Commanders one and a half here. It's still that that hard knocks bump for the Lions, who admittedly did score 35 points against the Eagles, the team that led the NFL in missed tackles week one. It's a fun stat, a good place to be. I imagine that not playing your players in the preseason doesn't have any lasting effects. But hey, nobody got hurt, and that's all that matters. So we're showing Washington is going to win this one. Another anomaly here. Washington's going to win this one about 58% of the time. I think you can see where this is going. Carson Wentz was, you know, he was Carson Wentz last week. He did some spectacular things, threw the ball uh, for 313 yards and four touchdowns, two head-scratching interceptions, but that's just Carson. He did not fumble, so that's interesting. 305 passing yards is good for third in the NFL last week. 58 rushing yards for Antonio Gibson, kind of figuring stuff out on the fly as they expected to have Brian Robinson as the lead back. Gibson also the leading receiver with 72 yards passing. 28 points for the Commanders last week was uh, good for fifth in the NFL. On the other side, the Lions' rushing game just ate up the Jonathan Gannon led Philadelphia defense. And by the way, let's talk about this. The Eagles trade up to get Jordan Davis in the first round, the big defensive tackle from Georgia on play. And by, and Davis of the five defensive tackles in Philadelphia played the fewest snaps of any of them, despite drawing rave reviews in the preseason. So figure that one out on plays where Davis was on the field. The lions averaged 2.9 yards per carry. On the plays without him on the field, they averaged 10 yards per carry. It's amazing that you win giving up 10 yards per carry. But you would have to think adjustments are going to be made. The Lions passing game just isn't going to scare anybody. Amonra St. Brown, the leading receiver again last week, 64 yards. I believe it was eight catches. Did get a touchdown. The, the St. Brown brothers both scored last week. But... DeAndre Swift was the offense for for Detroit, 144 yards on 15 carries. You can do that math and <laughs> figure out that's really good. Uh, and the Eagles defense was really bad. I don't think this is going to be the case this week. I think now there's a little bit of tape on this Lions team. Washington's front, even without Chase Young, is very good. So we're showing Washington covers this one about 59% of the time. Oh, boy. Uh, I guess we're going to take the even here on the money line. I would have liked a pl little bit of plus money, but not the world we live in. Our parlay, four picks in it. Bavada goes all the way up to a plus 13.93. Excuse me. Our next game is going to be this Atlanta Falcons-Los Angeles Rams game. We're showing the Rams are going to win this one about 81% of the time out, right? The Falcons did Falcons-y things last week. Uh, a fascinating game. Marcus Mariota very good up until the end of the game where he crumbled a little bit. Only two catches on, I think, eight-ish, seven or eight targets for second-year star tight end Kyle Pitts. Rookie wide receiver Drake London, London did have five catches for 74 yards. And the, the Cordero Patterson is fascinating. The, how do you get to 31 years old and then you realize hey, he might be one of the more talented running backs in, uh, in the NFL at this point? The guy's really good. Just such a weird situation. For the Rams, they got embarrassed last week. No, uh, no two ways about it. Matty Stafford, you have to wonder. This game is going to be telling in terms of 
how concerned we should be about Matt Stafford's elbow. Is it going to be a problem all year? A lot of interceptions last week. Cooper Cup led the way, 128 uh, receiving yards, but really was force-fed the ball in an offense that only used him in the tight ends. Allen Robinson, one catch for like 12 yards or something along those lines. We are showing that the Rams are going to cover the spread about 88% of the time. Big spread. I don't feel good about it. We're just going to take the minus 550 at Bavada, and that is going to bump our parlay up to a plus 1664 five picks. And look, we're just trying to make money here. 100 bucks wins you 1600 bucks right now. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Let's go to the Seattle Seahawks uh, 49ers game here, which is right here. Bavada has the 49ers minus seven at home. And that feels about right. This Seattle team is going to be interesting. We're showing the 49ers are going to win this one out right about 73% of the time. The Seahawks win in what I imagine was really their Super Bowl. We saw This is a common trend. I think we saw a handful of teams basically playing their Super Bowl week one. The Lions were another one of those teams. Seattle hosting Russell Wilson for the first time. Booing the crap out of Russell Wilson. Uh, mixed feelings about that one. But... Geno Smith leads the way with 195 yards passing. Rashad Penny, 60 yards rushing. And tight end Will Disley, the leading receiver with only 43 yards. And this is where I'm a little bit concerned about this Seahawks team because Geno Smith is not a throw-the-ball-down-the-field kind of guy. It's going to be up to DK to make plays after the catch. Seven catches, 36 yards last week, only 5.1 yards per catch. Those are not DK numbers. DK wants to DK wants to run by you. He doesn't want to get the ball and then try and make you miss. Tyler Lockett, three catches for 28 yards. They're going to figure some stuff out, but I, I do worry about their ability to push the ball down the field, especially against a really good San Francisco front four. Front seven, really. The 49ers lost last week, and Trey Lance looked adequate, but you can't really take too much away from that that Bears game in those hideous conditions. Uh, Lance also the leading rusher with 54 yards, 164 yards passing to uh, to his uh, opponent Justin Fields 121 on that on that terrible field. Juwan Jennings led the way, receiving with 62 yards. A little bit worried about what this running game is going to look like, especially with. Uh, Elijah Mitchell having gotten banged up. Debo ran the ball eight times last week. I don't think they want to do much more than that, even though he was uh, effective with 52 yards and a touchdown. Just not the best use of Debo Samuel. So they're going to have to figure out the running game. Trey Lance is going to look better in normal conditions. We're showing Seattle's going to cover this one about 55% of the time. Yeah, I just, I, again, I, I think San Francisco wins. I just don't I don't know that they're going to be able to put a bunch of points up. They can probably stop Seattle, but I don't know they're going to be able to put up a bunch of points. So we're going to go 49ers money line. We'll just take their win. And five picks in, our parlay at Bavada goes up to plus 2,056. A couple more games here on the docket. The uh, Cincinnati Bengals right here. The Cincinnati Bengals head to Dallas to take on the Dallas Cowboys. We're showing Bengals are going to win them outright about 82% of the time. Look, the Bengals, I mean, I you really probably could have won that game last week. A lot of things happened. Evan, Mc, Evan McPherson missed that kick, though the Steelers missed kicks in their own right. I just think the, the Bengals went into this game cocky. I think the Bengals went into this game last week feeling like they're good enough to win just by showing up. I think they needed to get punched in the face. I think they needed this reality check. Herbert had the worst game of his professional career, but he's coming off the appendix, hasn't really played much. They're going to look better. Meanwhile, the Cowboys lose Dak Prescott for this probably looking like four to six weeks at this point. Injuries are already a giant problem with this team. Zeke, 52 yards uh, on the ground. And that was really after a pretty good start. 52 yards on 10 carries, a lot of that early. 
Noah Brown led the way with 68 yards receiving. CD not uh, not much of a factor in this this game last week. Only two catches for 29 yards. Need uh, need more out of CD. The the 49 the uh, pardon me Cowboys the only team in the NFL not to score a touchdown last week. We're showing Cincy is going to cover this one about 93 percent of the time. Works for me. Uh, we'll take that minus one of five at Bavada on the on the Bengals cover, and that is going to take our parlay up to plus forty one ten. It's respectable. Nothing wrong with that. Our last game on the NFL schedule. We're going to look at this Bears Packers game. The Chicago Bears head to Green Bay one and zero to take on the zero and one Green Bay Packers. Exactly what everybody expected. The Packers are going to win this one about 87% of the time outright. The Bears, we talked about it. They won that that messy game against the 49ers. I don't know how much you can take away from it. Fields was fine, 18 of 17, I mean, 8 of 17 uh, in, in horrible conditions, 121 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. And uh, the leading rusher was Khalil Herbert, nine carries for 52 yards. David Montgomery, we're a little bit worried about this, but we see these games from Montgomery where he just can't seem to get in the flow. 17 carries for 26 yards, a long of six, a long of six. We talked about the 49ers rushing game. Montgomery was the top 100 player in the NFL as per the NFL uh, the NFL network list. That's not going to cut it. 17 for 26. Did catch three passes for 24 yards, but yeah. This 49, this... Uh, this Bears offense is going to have a hard time scoring the ball. Meanwhile, Green Bay just didn't look right. The Vikings came out with an inspired game plan, knocked the Packers off of theirs early, and the Kevin O'Connell hype is 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 warranted at this point. Man, did they look good. The Packers just were playing from behind the whole time. Got punched in the face early, 17 nothing in halftime. Rodgers was 22 of 34 for 195 and a pick. Jordan Love got some play time. Uh, their fascination with A.J. Dillon is a, is a bizarre one. I think Aaron Jones is a guy who can make plays at any time, only a five carries for 49 yards. The leading rusher for the team, despite the fact that A.J. Dillon got twice as many carries, 10 for 45. They also uh, threw the ball to A.J. Dillon six times. He caught five of them for 46 yards. So efficient, but just, you you know, he's one of those guys where A.J. you're not going to see a bunch of big plays from A.J. Dillon. Uh, Romeo Dubs, the Nevada rookie, the second leading receiver, the, the most of any actual receivers, four catches, 37 yards. They're still figuring out the passing offense, but... I think they're going to look a lot better this week. Quay Walker, really good debut, uh, eight tackles for the Packers. We're showing Chicago's going to cover this about 51% of the time. The The line at Bavada is a big one at 10. And, man, 10, it's just it's a big number. The Packers aren't going to score a ton. It's not an exciting uh, pick here, but the Packers are going to win this one. I don't know that they're going to cover, so we'll take the money line. Minus 525 at Bavada, and that's going to push our parlay. Eight picks in, up to plus 49.12. Let's, let's get a bonus college football pick in here real quick, just to just to get a little bit. Let's get over the 5,000 mark. And this is the first time I'm looking at these, so you know, we'll take Georgia minus 4,000 to win outright over South Carolina. That's fine. Bump, bump us up to plus 5,000 and uh, 37. <sighs> Nebraska fires their head coach last week's got frost. Weird stuff happens after you fire your head coach, so I don't, I don't like that one too much. Mississippi minus 800 over Georgia Tech. Pretty safe. Uh, Penn State, don't like that. Bama is plus 50 over uh, Louisiana Monroe. All right, you know what? We're, we're, we hit that 5,000 marker. $100 wins you 5,000 at Bavada. We'll take that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Free money. Uh, some underdog picks this week, but I feel good about them. 
thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, please subscribe, rate, review on whatever platform you're watching, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is. It is all appreciated. Thank you so much. This has been In Pursuit of a Parlay. I've been Chris Horwood. Follow me on Twitter, and we will see you back here next week.